Dr. Finlay, The Further Adventures of a Black Bag, based on the stories by A.J. Cronin and dramatised by Sue Rodwell, starring John Gordon Sinclair, Brian Pettifer and Celia Imrie. Episode 1, The Catch. There are some people who know exactly what they want, and there are some who waffle and fudge and never make up their minds. I've made up my mind. I'm glad to hear it, Doctor. The trouble with Finlay is he fancies himself a decisive man of action. If only that were true, well, it would have saved a deal of trouble. I'll ask Peggy today. Good. Unless I leave it until this evening. Well, that's the last of the honey. I'll get some more at the market. I think I might have marmalade, Janet. Are you sure, Doctor? Aye, quite sure. Mind you, Peggy will be busy on the wards. Maybe I should leave it till the weekend. That's up to you, Finlay. I don't want to hurry things. Why on earth not? Wouldn't it be best to get it over and done with, Doctor? A bit like lancing a boil. Ah, you're right, Janet. Today it is. At the hospital. Or maybe I could give her a lift home. Hang on a minute. Should I ask John Angus first? You're not wanting to marry him as well. Ask him for his daughter's hand. Isn't that what the so-called gentry expect? The man's hardly gentry. But he's the richest man in these parts, and I don't want to get on the wrong side of him. Well, whatever you decide, don't forget you're to be up at the Rob Farm this morning. Oh, God, I'd forgotten all about that. I was beginning to doubt the wisdom of having made Finlay a partner, what with all his shilly-shallying. <sighs> I'll be straight to the hospital after, so don't worry about lunch for me, Janet. Mm. How long's Finlay going to be like this? Goodness only knows. But if he goes on dithering, I wouldn't be surprised if Peggy didn't despair of the man. I certainly would. You should really rest your ankle for another week or two, Mrs Robb. Rest? I've no time to rest. I've a farm to run. Aye, but it was a nasty fracture you had. I know that well enough. I was there when it happened. You don't want to do too much and have the ankle break down completely. But of course not, Doctor. Good. Well, so you'll be telling me who's to do the milking and feed the chickens and look after the goats because they won't look after themselves. Oh, maybe that's some help for me now. Oh, thank God. Tilly! Bobby! Be quiet! Mrs. Rob? Mrs. Rob? Oh, I've brought the bandage. Oh, hello, Dr. Finlay. Uh, Nurse Angus. I've brought the crepe bandage for Mrs. Rob's leg. I've no need of it. It'll help with any swelling. Nurse Angus can put it on for you, show you how it's done. She's a dab hand with a crepe bandage. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Oh, very well, but quickly, I have a thousand things to do. Have you come all the way from the hospital? I felt like getting away from Matron for a while. On the warpath, is she? Oh, isn't she always? <laughs> Aye. Well, it's a fair way. I'll give you a lift back. Oh, that's all right, Doctor. I've got my bicycle. Here. Here we are, Mrs. Robb. Not too tight. It'll do. You can put the bicycle in the trap, nurse. I'm on my way to the hospital just now. Oh, if you're sure. Oh, quite sure. When you two have stopped fluttering your eyes at each other, I'd be grateful if you'd leave me to go on with my work. Oh, yes, of course. There's your fee on the table, Doctor, and a dozen eggs for Miss McPherson. Oh, there's no need to... I know that well enough. Now I'll say good day to you both. That woman terrifies me. <laughs> There's no harm in Agnes Robe. I've known her since I was a wee child. She's a soft enough heart underneath all that bluster. I may be. It was a fine concert at the weekend, wasn't it? It was. I really enjoyed the whole evening. I thought the trombonist was very fine. Very. <sighs> <sighs> Don't you just love this place? The trees, fields, no one for miles. It'd be a grand spot to build a house, just by the loch, don't you think? Are you wanting to build a house? Well, I might be. If oh, it's you... a pity Tam Conway's old barge spoils the view. Oh, not at all. It gives the loch a bit of character. It's an eyesore, and so's Tam. An eyesore and a layabout. Oh, Tam's all right. I've shared some fine salmon with him in that barge. Well, he could wash now and then. That's the nurse in you talking. Is it? And that's a good thing. 
I'm glad you approve. No, I just mean you shouldn't judge Tam by the way he looks. I'm not judging the man at all. Finley! Oh, damn. Finley! I've a fresh caught salmon if you and the young lady would like to have lunch with me. I have to be at the hospital, Tam. I'm giving Nurse Angus a lift. You stay. I'll bicycle back. Of course not. I'd rather. Really. Um, sorry the young lass couldn't stay for lunch. So am I. Still, all the more for us. He's a fine specimen, isn't he? He certainly is. <coughs> Caught him up by the Tanach rocks. With a rod and line? No, Finlay, I just dived in and there he was. He swam straight into my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you caught a bit of a chill doing it. No, nothing, nothing. Now, a bit more, a bit more butter, I think. Ah, ah, yeah. I have no bread to go with it. I had the last of that this morning. What about some eggs? None left. Pantry is bare just now. Mrs. Rob gave me a dozen. I'll not have her eggs in my galley. They're fresh. I'll have nothing from that woman. She was down by the water again last night with these rabid dogs of hers. She was shouting at me, telling me my barge was a... <laughs> was a disgrace! A disgrace, Finlay! Well, maybe it could do with a coat of paint. It suits me just fine as it is. Now, give me your plate. This is going to be a salmon that you will not forget. Nectar. It really was... <sighs> The finest fish I have ever tasted. I'm surprised you could bear to eat anything that scruffy man had his hands on. You eat a peck of dirt before you die, isn't that what they say? It probably is, but not all in the one day. You've a bad stomach tomorrow. You'll get no sympathy from Janet. You won't. <laughs> Her first Peggy, now Janet. What is it about poor Tam makes women so angry? I've no time for a man who doesn't do a stroke of honest work. It's not right. Maybe it's because he's happy to look after himself. He doesn't need a woman fussing over him. Only said it was scruffy. You can't deny it. That beard and his greasy clothes. Uh, still, he, he seems content enough without a wife. Uh, well, I'd better go and see who's in for evening surgery. Not a word. What about Janet? Peggy Angus, of course. Has he asked her? Has she said yes? I'd forgotten he was meaning to. Rubbish, Doctor. You're wanting to know just as much as I am. Maybe if he's told us nothing, it means there's nothing to tell. Well, I'll tell you something, Dr Cameron. If he loses that girl, he's a fool. Nurse! Good morning, Dr Finlay. <laughs> Has no one changed Mrs Reeves' dressing yet? There hasn't been time. Matron wanted me to see to the beds in the lower ward first. Well, that's just fine. Uh, I wanted a word, actually. I'd better be seen to the dressing. Oh, wait. I've got something to ask you. Yes, Doctor. You got back all right on that old bicycle of yours yesterday. I did, as you see. And you survived Tam Conway's salmon. I did. Is that what you wanted to ask? About the bicycle? It doesn't look very safe. Maybe your father could buy you a new one. I don't expect my father to buy me anything. I pay my own way. Of course. Anyway, the bicycle's not mine. It belongs to the butler's wife. She doesn't like to use it since she skidded on some ice last Christmas. I, I don't suppose as many other nurses at Leavenford Cottage Hospital can boast a butler. I don't suppose they can. I hope you don't think it makes me any less dedicated to my calling. Of course not. Though I'm sure you don't want to be a nurse for the rest of your life. What's wrong with being a nurse? Uh, nothing. I, I just meant... Yes. I... I just meant, maybe you'll be wanting to get married someday. I'm sure I will. Someday. I, 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 that's all I was meaning. Well, until then, nursing suits me just fine. As a matter of fact, I've been offered a very good position in London. Have you now? St Thomas's, ward sister. And are you going to take it? I'm not sure. I probably will, unless I have a better offer. Oh, it's a long way to go, London. Maybe I should just get right away from Leavenford for a while. 
See new places, new people, new doctors. Aye. Well, you better let the matron know what you decide as soon as possible. We'll be having to advertise for another nurse. I'll do that, Doctor, but as you've pointed out, I've a dressing to change first. By the way, I know Peggy! You couldn't help feeling sorry for Finlay. He's hardly said a word since he got back from the hospital. He's not touched his supper. I'm telling you, Dr Cameron, I'm not putting up with all this moping around for much longer. Well, I couldn't help feeling sorry for him. He took to going for long, solitary walks in all weathers. Which was a very good thing, as it turned out. At least for Tam Conway. Tam, are you at home? Tam, I'm coming aboard. Where are you, man? <sighs> Tam, are you down there? Finley. I'm coming down. <laughs> oh, I can't see a thing in here. Can I light a lamp? What uh, what are you like, Finley? I can't. <laughs> Yeah, that's better. Can I back, man? You sound in a bad way. Uh, been better. Well, let's have a look at you. How long have you been in this state? I don't know. Days. You look half starved. I've not been able to fish. Well, you should have sent for I've me. I've to take a message. <laughs> oh, blast it. Just tap your chest. You tell me where it hurts. All over. Ow! There. Oh, oh, don't do that again, Finlay. I'm going to listen to your chest now, Tam. I want you to breathe in and out when I tell you, all right? Aye. Okay, in. Out. And again. Aye. Ah, fine. It's a good thing I called by. It's only a cold I've got. It's much more serious than that. I think it's pleurisy. Is that bad? Well, it will be if you spend another day in this place. It's dripping with damp. You should be in a hospital. I hate those places. Anyway, I can't afford it. Well, have you someone you can go to? Family? No, there's nobody will have me. I left any family behind a long while ago, Finley. I'm fine. Don't you worry. I'll be up and about in no time. <laughs> He's likely to die if he stays on that barge. Tam's a stubborn man. He is that, but he needs looking after. And he won't go to hospital. We can't really have him here in Arden House. We most certainly cannot. Well, he can't stop where he is. We don't rob like strays. Look at all her dogs. She took them in, taught them how to behave properly. Maybe she could do the same for Tam. Maybe she could. I wasn't being serious, Doctor. No, but it's a grand idea, Janet. Will you see her at market today? I couldn't possibly ask her. It's that or Arden House. So I know you'll do your best. And that black pudding looks grand, Mrs Robb. I made a fresh batch yesterday. It's been selling just fine this morning. (coughs) Bobby, no. Looks as if he likes it too. (laughs) I'll have a piece as well as the bacon. As I was saying, I suppose you're Tam's only proper neighbour. I wish I wasn't, Miss McPherson. Well, if Dr Finlay's right, you won't be for much longer. He's really that poorly. He is. It's his own fault, the way he lives. If he was a dog, I suppose you'd take him in. I remember how wild your Bobby was when you found him, and now he's a great big softy. <laughs> Bobby! <laughs> Shit! Oh. Are you all right, Miss McPherson? Oh, yes. Just a wee nip. Oh, at least he didn't draw blood. Of course, I suppose a dog's a lot easier to tame than a man would be. Rubbish! There's no creature in this earth can't be trained, dog or man. Not once I've got my hands on them. It's a pity you can't take Tam on then, but there'd be far too much gossip. Gossip? I've never taken any notice of gossip and I never will. But Tam Conway, he'll not be changed. I'd given you up for lost, Dr Finlay. I'm sorry, Mrs Robb. It took me a while to persuade Tam into the car. Look at the state of him. He's in a very bad way. Come on, Tam. That's it. If he's drunk, he'll not come through my door. He can sleep it off in the barn. Tam's delirious. He's a temperature of 104. He needs a warm bed and good food. You have a job in your hands just to keep him alive, Mrs Robb. I've not lost a dumb animal yet. And I won't be making an exception with Tam Conway. 
She lifted Tam off the cart like a bag of feathers. She's a big woman. Agnes Rob will either cure the poor man or frighten him to death. All right, Tam Conway. Let's get some of this muck off you before you can fight back. Oh, stop your squirming. You're to be washed whether you like it or not. Agnes Rob didn't treat Tam with tender care exactly, but she pulled him round. In just a few days, his temperature fell, and the man became aware of his surroundings. I'm not staying here, woman. Don't you woman me, Tam Conway. I'm Mrs Rob to you, and you'll stay until you're better. And who is going to make me? I am. What is to stop me walking out right now? Well, for one, you've got no clothes on. Eh? And two, you can't stand up. I can. I'll show you. I'll... <sighs> <sighs> Canny. Oh, pull those blankets up. You're not decent. Now, I mean to get rid of that horrible growth of yours right now. Who shaved your beard off? That woman, of course. And look what she's done to my hair as well. Very neat. Gives you quite a distinguished air. Oh, you've got to get me out of here, Finlay. Uh, let's have a listen to your chest now. Uh, I'm fine, I'm fine. You've a fair way to go yet, Tam. Um... It was pneumonia led to the pleurisy. You need building up. Uh, that woman's stuffing food down my throat like I'm a prize pig. You can tell your housekeeper the next bacon she has will likely be me. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you've still got your sense of humour. You think I'm joking. I'm telling you, Finlay, I'm better. Uh, I brought tea for you and the doctor. And some scones. Thank you, Mrs Rob. The cheese from my own goats. You'll not mm. taste better. Well, I'm sure. Well, you've certainly done a fine job with Tam. You wouldn't believe how stubborn he can be. Yeah. Eat up your scone, Tam. Mmm, very tasty. My dogs like a scone for their breakfast. There you are, she's treating me like a dog. Aye, and very grateful you should be. Well, you seem in safe hands, Tam, so I'll get away back to Arden House. Oh, for pity's sake, Finlay, don't leave me alone with her. I don't know what she's going to cut off next. <laughs> she treats him like a child I've no doubt he acts like one But he's getting fit Thanks to Mrs Rob Aye, but I'm sure Tam thinks the medicine's worse than the illness <laughs> I'm sure he does <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr Finney, but I have to ask What? Did Peggy say yes? Well, actually, I haven't proposed to her uh, She's going away, so what's the point? Going away? To London Doctor, I despair of you sometimes What? You don't think Peggy wants a reason to stay and she's waiting for you to give her a reason? Well, you think so? I do Well, what if she says no? If I'm any judge of human nature, she won't Hmm What do you think you're doing? Putting on my boots, as far as I can see Why? I don't want muddy socks. You get back into bed this minute. I am going for a walk, woman, if you will give me my clothes. And you'll walk straight back to that barge? What if I do? I told Janet McPherson I could turn you into a half-decent human being and that's what I intend to do. Now, I'm away to my goats and I don't want you to step outside this bedroom. Hmm. How would you know if I did? What was that? Nothing. I'll bring your lunch at twelve. I think you can manage some beef and onions. So, you haven't locked it. <laughs> well, you evil old witch, if you think stealing my clothes will stop me, you don't know Tam Conway. You'll not keep me here up. Prisoner, a moment longer. <laughs> All right, boy. I'm set. Um, I'm just going to close the door now. <sighs> if I had taken another step, the beast would have savaged me, Finlay. Well, why didn't you try the window? She's nailed it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at you then. I have no doubt I've got bright eyes and a shiny coat. Aye, and a daily bath's done you the world of good. The loch is bath enough for me. Oh, stop complaining, man. Breathe in. Out. Again. And again. Well, there's no friction in your chest. Your cough's cleared up. And it would have done with or without that woman. I doubt that. She's looked after you just fine. 
good food, a warm room, plenty of rest. And she's not stopped nagging for a moment. Women never seem to realise we don't need them. You understand. You're like me, Finlay. Am I, Tom? Aye. We have to live our lives as we want to, unfettered. That's the word. Unfettered. Isn't that right? I don't know. I tell you what, Finlay. If I die in this godforsaken place, you're to have my barge. You're to take my place, man. I have to go now, Tam. Something I need to do. Finlay had had a glimpse of a future he didn't like the look of one little bit. A future maybe Peggy Angus could save him from. Can I have a word? Well, I'm off duty. Some matron can't shout at us. <sighs> I've just been talking with Tam Conway. That awful man. The things Agnes Robb's been telling me about him. I forgot you were friends with her. She's had so much to put up with, but I don't think even she can change him. Oh, maybe he doesn't want changing. He certainly needs it. Why is that? Well, it's obvious. Well, he just wanted looking after for a wee while. She's no right to try and turn him into someone completely different. He's under her roof. I didn't come here to argue with you, Peggy. Why did you come? Are you really wanting to go to London? What I told you about a job waiting for me at St Thomas's wasn't exactly true. Wasn't it? No. So you'll be staying? No. It wasn't true, but as soon as I said it, I knew that's what I really wanted to do. Get away for a while. So one of the nurses I was with in Glasgow has wangled me a job at Great Ormond Street. Well, that's, that's grand news. It's for eight months, not long. No, that's no time at all. Though if I like it, I might stay longer. Janet's reputation for being a canny judge of human nature was taking a severe battering. So, Dr Finlay could find nothing wrong with you. Could you not wait a moment before you come in? He said you're quite recovered. No thanks to you. Tam Conway, you're an ungrateful, cantankerous old fool. Here's your clothes. There's your boots. There's the door. You mean I can go? You're well. And after five weeks, I'll be glad to see the back of you. So Tam's free again? Free? Is that what you call it? Well, he's no cares on that barge of his. And no one to care about him. Is that any sort of life? Uh, maybe it is. If there are no calls, I think I'll take this afternoon off, Janet. Do some fishing. Finlay took to going up to the loch with his fishing rod and his thoughts. Whatever they were. He didn't confide in me, but I knew he needed time to himself. Finlay! Ah, oh, for goodness sake. Ah, ah, I thought I spotted you from the barge. You, you should have told me you were coming up here to do some fishing. Well, I wasn't sure I'd have time. I just brought my rod along in case. Are you settling back in the barge? I am, and it's heaven. <laughs> now, would you like to come back for a for a wee bit of cheese and beer? Well, I don't think I'll have the time, Tam. <laughs> hey, to be honest, Finlay, I, I want you to have a look at me, if you will. Why, what's the matter? That tight feeling in my chest. It's come back. And do you have a cough? Now and then, and it's worse when the wind's blown through the cabin. It gets right into my bones these days. I don't know what the matter is. So Peggy leaves for London at the end of the month? Don't change the subject, Doctor. Will you give me a second opinion on Tam or not? If the man would come to the surgery... You know he won't. That barge is a death trap. The thing you have to walk up... The gangplank. It's nothing more than rotten twigs. And as I can't swim... Aye, it is too much to ask. Don't worry, I'll take full responsibility if Tam dies. Come on, Finlay. That trick won't work on me. It's going to be slippery in all this rain. It's fine if you step carefully. You go first, Finlay. It's quite safe. Look! <coughs> Don't jump up and down. You'll weaken the planks. Come on, Doctor. I'll give you a hand. It's moving! Meniscus is attached to the barge! I thought I heard voices. Are you two going to take all day coming aboard? Just admiring the view, Tam. Out of my way, Finlay. I've a patient to examine. You can do your shirt up now. Well, Doctor, is it bad? You say it hurts you when you cough. As much as before. 
The trouble is, we can't find any reason why you should still be coughing. Well, maybe it's the damp. Uh, well, it could well be. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it just catches me like this. I wonder if you wouldn't mind going up on deck while Dr Finlay and I discuss your case. Uh, is it bad, Doctor? I'm sure there's nothing at all to worry about. Nothing serious. I will. You give me a call when you're finished. You think he's ill then, Doctor? Tam's very sick indeed. I didn't think he was that bad. He won't get over this easily. Why, what is it? He's lovesick, man. Can't you see it? Lovesick? You mean for Mrs. Rob? He's missing her so much. It's made him ill. Absolutely not. Tam needs looking after again. That's his fault, if he must live on that death trap of a boat. Would you make him suffer for his foolishness? I would. He needs you. According to Tam Conway, he needs no one. That's just his pride. Oh, maybe. Could I not bring him in for a moment? Just to have a word. You mean he's outside now? He's in the pony and trap with Finlay. In this rain? What are you thinking of, Doctor? He'll catch his death. Bring him in this minute. Quiet, please. I think you need to shout a wee bit louder, Doctor. Quiet, please. Right, well, as best man, I believe it's my duty to make a speech. Ah, it is, Finlay, but keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. Um, a toast to Agnes Robb. For making an honest man of Tam Conway. Uh, Agnes, Agnes Robb. Rob. <laughs> and now it's my turn for a toast. A toast and a plea to an absent friend, young Peggy Angus. Ah, yeah. 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 And for goodness sake, Dr Finlay, when the last gets back from London, will you please make an honest woman of her? <laughs> <laughs> and did Finlay do as he was told? Well, that's another story entirely. In Dr. Finlay, The Further Adventures of a Black Bag, Dr. Finlay was played by John Gordon Sinclair, Dr. Cameron by Brian Pettifer, and Janet by Celia Imrie. Nurse Angus was played by Stella Gonney, The Widow Rob by Phyllis Logan, and Tam by David Ashton. The episode was dramatised by Sue Rodwell and produced and directed in Bristol by Jeremy Howe and Viv Beebe. Yeah.